Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Om Nasta Prayashu Abhidreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloka Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, Chapter 11, Text Number 3 Tanu Pashukya Ninadam Jagad Baya Baya Bam Jagad Baya Baya Bam Pratyudya Yu Prajasava Patri Darshana Lala Saha Tamu Pashrutya Ninadam Jagad Baya Baya Bam Pratyudya yu prajasava Pratyudya yu prajasava Pratri darshana lalasaha Pratri darshana lalasaha Tamu pashrutya ninadam Tamu pashrutya ninadam Jagat paya paya vaham Jagat paya paya vaham Pratyudya yu prajasava Patri Darshana Lala Saha Tam, that, Upashrutya, having overheard, Ninadam, sound, Jagatpaya, the fear of material existence, Paya Avaham, the threatening principle, Prati, towards, Udhyayu, Rapidly proceeded. Praja, the citizens. Sarva, all. Patri, the protector. Darshana, audience. Lalasa, having so desired. Translation The citizens of Dwaraka, having heard that sound which threatens Pip fear personified in the material world, began to run towards him fast, just to have a long desired audience with the Lord, who is the protector of all devotees. Please repeat. The citizens of Dwarka, having heard that sound, which threatens fear personified in the material world, 
began to run towards him fast. Just to have a long desired audience with the Lord, who is the protector of all devotees. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As already explained, the citizens of Dwaraka who lived at the time of Lord Krishna's presence there were all liberated souls who descended there along with the Lord as entourage. <clears throat> all were very anxious to have an audience with the Lord, although because of spiritual contact they were never separated from the Lord. Just as the gopas at Vrindavan used to think of Krishna while he was away from the village for cowherding engagements, the citizens of Dwarka were all immersed in thought of the Lord while he was away from Dwarka to attend the battle of Kurukshetra. Some distinguished fiction writer in Bengal concluded that the Krishna of Vrindavan, that of Mathura and that of Dwarka were different personalities. Historically, there is no truth in this conclusion. The Krishna of Kurukshetra and the Krishna of Dwaraka are one and the same personality. <clears throat> the citizens of Dwaraka were thus in a state of melancholy due to the Lord's absence from the transcendental city. As much as we are put in a state of melancholy at night because of the absence of the sun. The sound heralded by Lord Krishna was something like the heralding of the sunrise in the morning. So all the citizens of Dwarak awoke from a state of slumber because of the sunrise of Krishna. <clears throat> they all hastened towards him just to have an audience. The devotees of the Lord know no one else as protector. The sound, this sound of the Lord is identical with the Lord as we have tried to explain by the non-dual position of the Lord. The material existence of our present status is full of fear. Out of the four problems of material existence, namely the food problem, the shelter problem, the fear problem, and the mating problem, the fear problem gives us more trouble than the others. We are always fearful due to our ignorance of the next problem. <laughs> the whole material existence is full of problems, and thus the fear problem is always prominent. This is due to our association with the illusory energy of the Lord, known as Maya, or external energy. Yet all fear is vanquished as soon as there is sound, the sound of the Lord, represented by his holy name, as it was sounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the following 16 words. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. We can take advantage of these sounds and be free from all threatening problems of material existence. Srila <clears throat> Prabhupada ki jai. So, it's amazing, isn't it, how when Krishna descends, all these different personalities come with him from the spiritual world and they all enact in his pastimes, just like the uh, the associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're all residents of a spiritual world. They come here to... Uh, Krishna doesn't like to... How can he associate with non-devotees? He has to be with devotees. So he has to bring his devotees with him. And uh, so this is... And when Krishna leaves the planet, they leave with him. So. It's a wonderful feature of Krishna's pastimes and activities that all of his associates are all uh, pure devotees and they all appear with him. And so they're very lucky, but at the same time, you know, they also experience the different uh, moods of Krishna, of, of the resonance of being deprived of his association and uh, being so happy to see him uh, after some time, they're running towards him. So the pastimes of the Lord are very sweet. And uh, <clears throat> Krishna here, I mean, Srila Prabhupada, I mean, he is saying how the four problems of material existence, the fear problem is the worst. 
um, because we don't know what's going to happen. Because the uh, other problems, the food problem, the shelter problem, the, the mating problem, those are relatively easy to solve. But the fear problem is there because we don't really know what, what, what is going to happen at the next moment because we really have no control over our lives. So this is one reason why people have a lot of anxiety because they just don't know what's going to happen because karma is such that bad things happen to good people. <clears throat> and we see that, you know, so many apparently nice people are, you know, someone walks into a church or a synagogue and he shoots 10 people or innocent kids, you know. So a devotee is different because a devotee doesn't fear because a devotee has complete faith in the Lord. And so therefore, it's, it's very important for devotees to uh, <clears throat> be very pure in their behavior. Because if they're very pure in their behavior, then they can expect that gradually all their previous karmic reactions will disappear. And this is uh, a very important principle that if we follow what Prabhupada called the four regulative principles, the four regulative principles of freedom, because by following them we get free from the law of karma. So we don't know what things will happen to us in this life. We have no idea. We don't know what kind of reactions we'll get. But a devotee is not under the law of karma anymore. We're under Krishna's divine law. And he protects his devotees, just like a poor man will protect a very valuable jewel. So Krishna looks after his devotees very carefully. And uh, so therefore, devotees, we know that and we try to live purely so that we minimize the karma that we, that normally non-devotees experience, that they, they have no idea what is going to happen to them at any moment. And we have no idea either, but we, we have faith in Krishna. So whatever happens to us, we take it as Krishna's mercy. And we see that Practically every single great devotee goes through some difficulty, goes through some test. We see that with Sanatana Goswami. He wanted to kill himself because he had these terrible sores on his body. It's not like, you know, these are people who descended from the spiritual world. Sanatana Goswami, you know, he's, he's a Manjari in the spiritual world. Is that right, Pram? <laughs> Sanatana Goswami. What's his name? Sakar Muli. Huh? Sakar Muli. Mata Muli? Sakar Muli. Sakar Muli. Oh, in spiritual world. Yeah. Labanga. <coughs> huh? Labanga. 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 Okay, so, you know, you got Raghunath Das Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, um, great devotees and well, Sanatana Goswami had these terrible sores on his body and he wanted to kill himself because Lord Chaitanya kept embracing him. He felt so bad. So a, a, a pure devotee is not exempt from difficult situations. And so from the examples we see, we, we should expect that sooner or later there's going to be some difficult situations. But uh, a devotee is always confident that Krishna, he's always helping him or her. Whatever situation we put in, in a good situation or a bad situation, we know that uh, Krishna is our friend. And we see from the example of Krishna's dealings with 
different personalities, we, we, we have complete faith that Krishna is the kindest person and that he never harms anybody, any living entity, uh, period. He's always kind to everybody. So Prabhupada said that even when someone is starving to death, you know, Krishna's trying to help them because Krishna is putting them on a special diet <laughs> of nothing to eat. But he's, you know, they're purging themselves of their karma. So Krishna's always helping everybody. And we see from the example of Putana. So Putana, you know, she was a witch. She wanted to kill Krishna. But Krishna still awarded her a position in the spiritual world. And uh, so devotees have these examples to reassure us that Krishna is always the... Uh, Suridam Savu Bhutanam, the best friend of all living entities. And, uh, but the one characteristic of these devotees, these pure devotees who, who may undergo difficulties, is actually their humility. So, all those personalities who descended, you know, with Lord Chaitanya, they were all extremely humble people. And therefore, even though, you know, they may have gone through some difficulty, but, you know, they didn't ever, uh, they never complained. They were always self-satisfied and always in a humble mood like Krishna Das Kavaraj. The, the very end of the Chaitanya Charamrita is very nice because he he expresses his mood and his humility, which I'm going to read a bit here. The Vrindavan deities of Madan Mohan with Srimati Radharani, Govinda with Srimati Radharani, and Gopanath with Srimati Radharani, and the life of, of the life and soul of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. So that my desires may be fulfilled, I place the lotus feet of these personalities on my head. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Lord Nityananda, Advaita Chari and their devotees, as well as Sri Sarup Damada Goswami, Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, who is my spiritual master, and Sri Jiva Goswami. The mercy of their lotus feet is my spiritual master, and my words are my disciples, whom I have made dance in various ways. Seeing the fatigue of the disciples, that his words, the spiritual master has stopped making them dance, and because that mercy no longer makes them dance, my words now sit silently. My inexperienced words do not know how to dance by themselves. The mercy of the Guru made them dance as much as possible, and now after dancing they have taken rest. I now worship the lotus feet of all my readers, for by the mercy of their lotus feet there is all good fortune. If one hears, this is very nice, listen to this carefully. If one hears the pastimes of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as described in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, I wash his lotus feet and drink the water. I decorate my head with the dust of the lotus feet of my audience. Now you have all drunk this nectar and therefore my labor is successful. Because previously in the Adi Leela he's saying how he was empowered to write <clears throat> the Chaitanya Charamrita by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who? Nityananda. He was empowered to write it. So he didn't take any credit whatsoever. Praying the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita is filled with the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the Supreme Personality of God Himself. It invokes all good fortune and destroys everything inauspicious. If one tastes the nectar of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita with faith and love, I become like a bumblebee tasting the honey of transcendental love from his lotus feet. <laughs> Amazing. 
realized devotees are like bumblebees maddened by their own mellows at Krishna's lotus feet. The scent of those lotus feet perfumes the entire world. Who is a realized soul that could give them up? So, anyway, that's a, an example of the humility of these pure devotees. Um, well, his other famous prayer is Jagai Mada Hoite Munase Papista Purusha Rikita Hoite Munase Legista. I am more sinful than Jagai and Madai. I'm lower than a worm in stool. Um, so, this kind of humility <clears throat> is uh, hard to be like that, but he really meant it. And uh, so, this is the doorway or the entrance to gaining the, the treasure of love of Krishna. Kriya, Srila Prabhupada says in the purple here about um, how the holy name is none different from Krishna and therefore devotees don't have any fear. We don't have any fear because we have the holy name and because when we chant the holy name we're associating with Krishna and Krishna does not know any fear because Krishna is the Lord of all. He's the most powerful. So why would we have any fear? So therefore we remember the prayer, Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasvigraha Panakshita Nichin Mukto Binatvam Nama Namino. It's a very important prayer which is in the Padma Purana. It says that the holy name of Krishna is like a touchstone and uh, a touchstone fulfills all desires. It is non-different from Krishna. It is a person. It is full and complete. Punakshita Nichimukto. So the holy name, uh, well, Lord Chaitanya says, Nam Nam Akari Vahudani Jasavishakti, the holy name alone can render all benediction to living beings. So Krishna, he has many names. You can chant any name. Even Jehovah, Allah, Yahweh. These are names of God. Of course, we don't chant these names because. Srila Prabhupada and Lord Chaitanya instructed us that the name Krishna is the most important name. He gave the example of uh, somebody who manages a big company. And these people, they have many associates. So they call their cleaner, I mean the, the cleaner calls them, yes sir. <laughs> And then they have some salespeople. And then the salespeople, them, they have a different name. They call, yes, Mr. Jones. And then the, the board directors on the board, they call him Jimmy, Jimmy Jones. <laughs> and then his lover calls him Darling. So these names have different degrees of intimacy. But the name... Darling is the most intimate. So, out of all the names of God, the name Krishna is the most intimate. So, chanting the holy name is, it gives love of God. There's a conversation in the Chaitanya Charamrita between Lord Chaitanya and, and the head of the Tattvavadis, who are followers of Madhavacharya, right? Bayavija. Huh? Bayavija. What's his name? Bayavija. Bio, okay. So anyway, there's a conversation, and uh, they're discussing different sp spiritual topics. And so the Tapavadis say, well, he was explaining how by following Varnashram properly, you can go to Vaikuntha. So Lord Chaitanya said, well, this is not, you know, who wants to go to Vaikuntha? <laughs> we don't want to go to Vaikuntha, do we? No. We don't want to go to Vaikuntha. So, we're trying to go to Vrindavan. And that's where love is exemplified in the highest degree by the residents of Vrindavan. So, Lord Chaitanya said that we chant the name of Krishna. We're not interested in Vanashram. We're interested in chanting Hare Krishna. 
because this gives the highest benefit. And this is what Haridas Thakur explained too, that by chanting Hare Krishna, you automatically arouse your dormant love of Krishna. So that love, it takes a long time to develop. You know, how long, I mean, George Harrison, he, I don't know how long he was a devotee for, a couple of years, but, you know, he was complaining about how long it took. But, you know, I've been chanting, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It, you have to be very patient. Krishna doesn't give it very easily. It's very, uh, you know, Krishna makes you wait and wait and wait and wait until you're really qualified. So, you know, even though you chant attentively and you follow the program, you know, it, it just, it takes time. And you have to be very patient. And sometimes devotees, they give up because they don't want to be patient. And this is very sad because the process definitely works. It's just that Krishna, he's testing you. He's waiting to see, make sure you're very sincere and you're very pure. So this is uh, another test. And, but Lord Chaitanya also encouraged us with the Shikshastakam because the Shikshastakam is the progressive, gradual uh, approach to intimacy with Krishna. Because in the beginning, we're going on Sankirtan and, you know, it purifies the heart. It, it, destroys the repetition of birth and death, etc., increase the ocean of transcendental bliss, and then, you know, we, the holy name is emphasized, then humility is emphasized, then detachment is emphasized, and then hankering for, you know, love, a taste, and then the seventh verse, Lord Chaitanya, you know, he says, Feeling your separation, I consider a moment to be like 12 years or more. And in the last verse, there's complete surrender. That, you know, you can do whatever you want with me. Because we know that Krishna will only do what is right for us. He will only do the best thing. And uh, that is really um, devotees' goal, is to come to that point of only wanting one thing. Nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is that we get love. Nothing else. Because all our Varnashram duties, household duties, business duties, everything else pales in comparison completely with our goal and desire and the ultimate reason why Lord Chaitanya appeared is to get love of Krishna in the mood of the gopas. That's why we're singing every day uh, in the Tulsi prayer, I want to be your, this humble servant of, made servant of Krishna praise. I want to see your pastimes. So that's what we want. So, <clears throat> It, uh, you know, it's a gradual process and devotees are never afraid. Um, when Srila Prabhupada went, was staying with John Lennon, <clears throat> the, they were complaining at Tittenhurst Park, John Lennon and Yoko Ono were complaining that there were some ghosts in the house. So generally people are afraid of ghosts. <laughs> but Srila Prabhupada, he just sprinkled some water there, and he said, chant Hare Krishna. And so the ghosts, they disappear. And also Bhakti Siddhanta, he, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he went somewhere to open a temple, and there was this house that was abandoned because it was reputed to have so many ghosts in it. So he said, we don't care, we'll, we'll take it and we'll use it as a temple. So they got it very cheap and used it as a temple. So devotees, we should not have any fear, um, especially sannyasis. They have to be totally fearless. So this is the... <clears throat> because the sannyasis are totally dependent on Krishna, of course we should all uh, 
B come to that point, but um, well, there's nothing to fear because Krishna will protect us. He promises. Krishna's true to his word. Prabhupada got so angry or upset when devotees didn't prom make their, you know, follow their vows. You know, you promised that you would chant 16 rounds. You promised that you would follow the, follow the four regular principles. So, you know, being true to your word, being honest, is such an important principle. So we, do we really think Krishna is not honest when he says, I will protect you from all sinful reaction? Of course he is. He's totally honest. So Prabhupada, one time he said that you should be so honest that if you have some money hidden away and somebody comes to steal your money and it's hidden away, that you tell him where your money is. <laughs> really? That's what he said, yeah. Why do you keep your money? Huh? <laughs> Where do I keep my money? I don't have any. I'll ask you. Okay, you ask me and I'll ask you. We'll have an exchange. I think I'll do better. So, this is being huh? recorded also. <laughs> you have to be honest for both. What's that? I'm being honest. <laughs> I've got a $12,000 mobile home. I'm proud of that. Anyway, so, you know, these principles are very important. Because <clears throat> the most important person to be honest with is ourselves. I mean, you can't fool Krishna. You can fool everybody else. Maybe not everybody, but, you know, uh, you can put on a good show, but sooner or later, if you're not being honest with yourself, Krishna will embarrass you <laughs> in front of everybody. And we've seen that so many times. People put on a show, big leader, big sannyasi, whatever, and then, you know, back to being a mouse. <laughs> yeah, just... Uh... Anyway, so we have to be very honest with ourselves, with Krishna. And that is probably one of the most important things because everybody has to admit they're a fool. Everybody. Because all the greatest acharyas admit that. What to speak of ourselves. That's why it's very important to read about the lives of the great devotees because then you automatically realize, I'm not even a devotee because they're so elevated and their consciousness is so uh, absorbed in Krishna and they have all these symptoms of love of God, which, you know, which for, for me anyway is just not there. So, you know, it helps us to become humble to hear about these great devotees. So, <clears throat> um, we have no fear and uh, we, we accept the words of great devotees to reinforce our trust in Krishna. Just like um, Uddhava, Uddhava and Akrura. There's one nice prayer. Kapandasastvada paramsamiyam bhakta pita kriya. You know that verse? Anyway, it's, uh, I always forget the words, but it's a very nice verse spoken by, there's two verses, practically exactly the same, where both Uddhava and Akrura say, uh, my dear Lord, <clears throat> you are such an affectionate and grateful friend, who would reject you and give you up for somebody else? You are so kind, that you fulfill the desires of your devotees and you also give yourself to them. Natata me priyatama, nacha sankara, nacha nashi nashankara. So Krishna says, uh, no one is to He says, no one is dearer to me than you are. 
neither Shankarshan, neither the goddess of fortune, not even my own self is dearer to me than you are. So Krishna is following in the footsteps of his devotees to get the dust. But there's a commentary on that verse and, and actually Krishna is, Krishna is in front of the devotees but somehow or other he's saying he's following the footsteps of his devotees to get the dust. Anyway, so Krishna is so kind. We should always have faith in Krishna. And uh, like the residents of <clears throat> Dwaraka, we should be very enthusiastic to see the Lord, to see the, the, at least here we can see the deities every day. Prabhupada talked about how back in the day in, in India, when they had very, well, maybe it's still like that, but um, wealthy people, they had deities in their home or they had a temple very close by. And that if they didn't go to see the deities every day, the pujari would find them. So they had to go every day. So we should go every day, see the deities, and uh, all the devotion that so many devotees here are spending so much time and effort to worship the deities, all that love is accumulated in the deities. And so the deities, they shower that love. When we look at them, they want to benedict us with that love. So we should, uh, you know, contemplate the deities, all the different individual parts of the Lord's body. It's described that we should meditate on the Lord's feet for a long time because they're like thunderbolts to destroy the mountain of sin in the meditating devotee. So it's impersonal not to look at the different parts of the Lord's body. Anyway, so we have so many spiritual crutches, tools to help us overcome the fear problem. So devotees, they're not afraid. We're always... Uh, we shouldn't be in anxiety when, when devotees would write to Prabhupada and express some kind of anxiety. He said, he always said, don't worry. Don't worry, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be fine. So <clears throat> this is our motto, chant and be happy. Hare Krishna. So any questions, comments, reflections, additions? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate your comment about not having fear because we are taking shelter of the holy name and of Krishna. Um, and also, like, just a comment, or maybe you could talk more about that, but we also have to engage with that spiritual energy and with Krishna. Like, we have to what? We have to like engage with Krishna. and Engage this, with Krishna. Yeah, I mean... Is it enough to just say, okay, Krishna is protecting me, or, you know, we have to do our part also in terms of our, you know, daily sadhana. Yeah. And well, we, I mean, we have basically, you know, when you go on a journey, right, if you go to the train station to buy a ticket or the airport, whatever, okay, you have to know where you want to go, right? If you don't know where you want to go, the, you know, the conductor can't help you, right? The ticket office can't help you. So we have to know where we want to go. And we are aspiring to go to Goloka Vrindavan, right? So to go lo to go to Goloka Vrindavan, we have to know, you know, what's going on in Goloka Vrindavan to be attractive. So therefore, we, Krishna sent so many pure devotees to the material world to describe what's going on and what the mood is and how the devotees are, the, the associates of the Lord, what it's like there. So we should try to understand their mood. It's not, you know, 
you're doing service is great, you know, full time, book distribution, Pajari, whatever else. But at the same time, we have to cultivate the mood of the Brajabhasas, the mood of the great devotees. So this is something we have to work on. It's not so easy. You know, it's great to be a devotee and prashadam's great, kirtan's great, dancing's great, everything else. <laughs> but there's a lot more to it. It's a very deep, deep philosophy. And it takes, you know, application. Krishna, you know, wants to see our whole life completely molded around him and his associates. Hare Krishna. That uh, <coughs> Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's verse that you quoted, I thought many times, like, how can, how can I, what can I do or what? He says, um, I mean, I, I'm not saying that he was pretending, there is no pretending, it's a genuine feeling, humility that Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami yeah. has. Jagai madai hoite muise papisto. That's very nice, very here, but sometimes I feel like the standard of that achievement is so high, the bar. How can I practice or, or should I keep on saying it will happen or automatically or? Well, this, um, <clears throat> you're asking the wrong person <laughs> because I'm not like that myself. But, I mean, we have to just be completely aware of how insignificant we are and, and, and how foolish we are, you know. Coming to the material world, we've neglected Krishna for so long. We try to enjoy independently of Krishna. Um, we've probably done, all, I mean, bad things, you know, sinful activities. Maybe not you, I know I have. So. It's easy, in a way, to feel like that. Because, I mean, a worm in stool doesn't really commit sinful activities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't kill animals or anything. So, for us, it's kind of easy to feel like that. I mean, but, you know, these are examples. We're supposed to learn from the mentality of these great devotees how we should think. And we know that he's not like that himself. He's a great devotee. He's given us the Chaitanya Charamrita, so he has so many wonderful things about him. But we can't say that about ourselves. At least I can't. Anyway. So maybe I can also think like it's like a uh, indirect way of glorifying Chaitanya Charamrita that he's going to worship the future leader. The feet of who? Readers of the Chaitanya. readers, yeah, yeah. How do you worship future readers? So it's a, like a feeling that uh, it's like glorifying Chaitanya Chaitanya that came through him. Yeah, I mean, he, he also begs in, somewhere in the Chaitanya Chaitanya. He, beg, he begs for the, uh, for the blessings of the devotees that can take the dust from their lotus feet. Mm -hmm. He, I, I, I ask permission <laughs> yes. and I beg that I can take the dust of the lotus feet of the devotees. Anybody who reads it, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's inconceivable, really. That's all you can say. But he's... I was just trying to see how it's relevant where we can, I mean, I can at least try to. Right. I don't know how. Well, any uh, any any comments? <laughs> that, that, that's in the first chapter. The, um, the, it, it's yeah. probably other places as well. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just something to meditate on. You know how humble okay. a great devotee like Krishna Das Kaviraj is, which behooves us to be, you know, even more humble because mm -hmm. we're not on his level. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice yeah, class. Oh, one, one, two. there's more. In the chat. Don't you just read it? 
A question from GA. It mm -hmm. seems like Srila Prabhupada is offering everyone who comes in contact with his Vani two choices. The gradual path, Vanashram Dham, and the more direct and intimate path, Krishna Bhakti. It's a question. What's the question? What's more? Well, both are important. I mean, Prabhupada wanted Daivi Vanashram, but, you know, the ultimate goal of Daivi Vanashram is, is to uh, go back to Godhead, is to become more absorbed in divine activities, Daivi. So it's one and the same. You know, Daivi Vanashram is one and, one and the same as achieving Krishna Prema. But, you know, it, the Vanashram part of it is for those who are not really uh, Krishna conscious enough to independently pursue Krishna Prema. They need support. Bhaktivinoda like Thakur used the example of how Vanashram is like a, a safety net. You know, if someone's an acrobat, a high wire air, acrobat artist, if they fall down, they'll be protected. So Vanashram is like that, is to protect people, you know, in their spiritual life. Some kind of social support. But it's not the goal of, it's not the ultimate goal is to do your Vanashram duties perfectly. The ultimate goal is Krishna Prema. Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, just on the point of Ma Suchaha, uh, of, what? Uh, of Ma Suchaha, do not fear, that like Krishna is giving us oh, that yeah. uh -huh. reassurance, you had touched on that point. Um, having some uh, trust in, in Krishna, as devotees it's very reassuring, and then wanting to share that with, with others. Um, I, I guess my fear would be having it come off a bit judgmental, like someone's, someone, it does, someone that we're meeting does have fear, mm -hmm. and we're saying, do not fear. Uh -huh. So I, I, I guess I was just hoping you could touch on that a bit. Maybe there, there's like a, <laughs> a, a flip side to that, some type of ad, advice we could give them towards yeah. developing that trust, towards releasing fear. Well, I mean, they have to associate with devotees. That's one of the most important principles. Chant Hare Krishna and associate with devotees and follow the four principles. You know, give up sinful activities. As long as you're not following the principles, you know, you're going to get bad <laughs> reactions. <laughs> so, you know, you have to preach to people. You've got to give up eating meat, you've got to get from taking intoxicants, having illicit sex, all that. And so, you know, you have to do it in a polite, reasonable way, but that's the bottom line. Unless they give up their simple activities, they're not going to get free from fear. So right? How, how they can enrich their lives towards... Yeah, the, the by giving them association, you know, all the ways that we know are the steps to, you know, progressive spiritual life. Yeah, there's Thank certain you. steps. It's all laid out for us. It's quite simple, really. You just have to be uh, compassionate and get out there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.